So now we're going to see how we can preview this file. I can press the play button and that is going to just play the um, file itself. But notice how it keeps coming from not real time to real time. That depends on your computer's RAM um, and speed. So now um, what I want to show you is how would you really define if this is playing in real time or not. To make sure that it plays in real time, what we want to use is the RAM preview. So instead of clicking this play button in the preview panel, we're going to use the RAM preview, which is the last button on here. So if we go back to the beginning again, you can press the home button if you're using a desktop computer with a keyboard. Um, <clears throat> and uh, we're going to press this button to generate what is called a RAM preview. So this is going to go through the whole 30 seconds or whichever area we define to do the preview for. And then it's going to play again in real time. So the regular uh, preview is very useful if you just want to kind of see how things uh, move. Uh, but if you want perfect timing, then you definitely want to use a RAM preview. So right now, why we see this it still is because it just didn't have any more. It only had a three seconds of action. So that gives you a pretty good idea on the timing now that it took to get from that spot to the next. Okay, so that's how you can preview that. But now there's a lot more stuff that uh, you can do with After Effects. And we're, we're going to start exploring some of that stuff. I want to uh, show you, for example, if we want to just focus on the phone and not the background, we can also use this awesome tool um, called the Solo Mode. If we press here under the dot, it will just focus on the phone one. It's not going to show me uh, what's in background one. So it's pretty much like hiding your layer. Now I only have two now, but you can imagine if you had like 50 layers, you can quickly jump from just one to the next um, just by using the Solo button. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, continue. So if you remember in the animation, I had um, the iPhone sort of duplicated and panning from left to right. Now, to be able to do that, we can use what they're called animation presets in After Effects. So I'm going to highlight my phone, and I'm going to go to Animation, Browse Presets. Now, this is a way where you, this is a place where you can preview the presets available. So what it's going to do is going to open Bridge, and then we can preview. Now, you can also, if you already know what you want to apply, you can go to the right side where it says Effects and Presets, and kind of see all the presets that are available. But again, in the beginning, it's kind of hard to imagine what those presets do. So, okay, so now you'll see in um, Adobe Bridge, we get uh, the folders for all the presets. And I'm going to jump to um, just a couple to see what what's going on on here. So in the behaviors is the one that actually I'm going to be using, which is called the auto scroll horizontal. And notice it gives me a preview, so it shows me what that tool does. There's an auto scroll, but go, works vertically. And there's some other ones that are actually quite useful, like fading, fading and out, opacity flash, wiggle. Uh, and to go back to other presets, just uh, go back to the breadcrumb. Um, order here and we're gonna go let's say if you're doing text you can see some of the animation available for text uh, you can do tracking all kind of stuff very fun so take some time and play around with this these solves are quite popular obviously
Okay, but I'm gonna go ahead and just go back to the one that I need, which is the first one under behaviors. I double click to apply it to the effect. Now, one thing to note is that when you apply a motion preset, you would apply that preset from the keyframe or the current time indicator line that you have selected here in the timeline. So if, I, um, if I'm actually in the 15 second mark and I go to browse preset, the effect will start from 15 seconds and later. Now, if I wanted to start right from frame zero, then make sure you're at frame zero when you apply that effect. Okay, so now there it goes. So very cool, very simple. Now I have a continuous amount of motion going on here. <clears throat> now, if I want to change the properties of these effects, I can do some things like uh, I can open the menu here and notice that now I have another menu called effects. Now, each effect is going to have a different amount of uh, presets, uh, properties, as well as the name of the properties that uh, each effect uses to, you know, to create that kind of effect. So now if I um, go to auto scroll speed, here will tell me, for example, you know, the uh, tile center, you know, where that starts. Uh, if I want to mirror edges, if I want to rotate this over time, uh, and I can actually make this menu bigger by holding and dragging up here. And notice that there's the speed, for example, of the auto scroll and things that, again, are very relevant to this here. Now, I kind of like this here, but I'm just going to play around with some numbers just so you can see. So let's say I want to change the speed of this. Uh, maybe let's put let's just type in 50 then when I test this you know the speed is going to change of the auto scrolling uh, let me hit reset to set it to the default settings here now I can also change the width of the tile so I can do something like this. Now you can also do this over time. So let's say you want this to start very small and then when it gets to about six seconds the tile width becomes normal. You can tap in a hundred. So now when you play it back you will see this sort of effect. So again all I did was activate the time stop watch. So then I could adjust it over time. Now to go back to a keyframe you already selected, you can use this handy back and forward buttons. So if I go to frame zero and now uncheck or remove the keyframe by clicking on that little dot again, now notice I only have this one keyframe available. Now if I click on the stopwatch again, it removes any keyframe that I had created before. This is actually very important and tends to be the biggest mistake when you first start using After Effects. If you want to add multiple um, keyframes, which you can definitely do, let's say we want to start at 100%, at the six seconds we're going to go to 50%, then when it gets to uh, maybe the 10 second mark or about here, we're going to bring this back to 100%. Now notice all I'm doing is just traveling through the timeline and changing the values here. I am not clicking on this because if I was to click on the time watch, um, the time stopwatch icon again, it deletes all the keyframes that I have. So if you do that, make sure you just undo. You can go to edit, undo. Or obviously, Command Z or Control Z, and that would do the same thing. But yeah, if you click on the uh, stopwatch again, once you have keyframes, it will remove them. All right, so I'm going to keep it actually basic here. I'm going to keep it at 100%. Everything else actually travels quite well for what I'm trying to do. Okay, so that's the first effect that I applied here. Now, um, 
There we go. Now what we need to adjust is the text that's going to be coming in right about here. 